it was something like 135 billion dollars moved through live video and not only do, does that open up a major opportunity for the rest of the world uh but you know i can't wait to see what happens when like the uh storytellers get a hold of this and start using it besides uh straight qvc style selling because it's it's it truly is a game changer this is creative Disruption, the intersection where entertainment, data, and creativity meet. Here's your host, Ricky Ray Butler and Daryl Leaves. Welcome back to the Creative Disruption Podcast, where we're talking about things that are really disrupting the industry and the creators or people that are actually doing it. And I'm joined by my friend, my cohort, Ricky Ray Butler. How are you doing, Ricky? Doing great. Thanks, Daryl. I'm really excited about today. I'm excited to chat with Dave. Um, this is I am so time. excited about this one. I'm so excited about this one. I, I think in, in the industry, like we can kind of see things that are going to happen. And uh, a lot of people uh, see live streaming as the next uh, venture of really uh, uh, content creation. And they think, oh, okay, we've been doing live stream for a long time. And we have Twitch and, you know, YouTube and all these different places to do live streaming. But I don't even, I think we're just barely scratching the surface and it's going to go e even far greater into the future. And that's why we have Dave Lazar on our guest today. Uh, Ricky, do you want to do us a quick little intro? Yeah. So Dave, you know, he's been innovating and doing amazing, you know, stuff in our industry and in entertainment and technology for the last 15 years. He's also the, the founder of Stage 10, which has over 160,000 users. I'm Dave. It's great to have you on. Um, how has this year been with Thanks. the Stage 10 business? Oh, it's been great. First of all, thank you guys so much for having me here. I'm uh, excited. I'm a big fan of the podcast and um, uh, excited to talk to all the great creators that, uh, that tune in. Uh, so Stage 10 is going great. I mean, this is, I was just saying to Daryl, this is really our time. Um, we've always been about that next generation of interactive content formats uh, monetized by transactions. And um, the, uh, I would say the, the changes in society brought on by the um, uh, pandemic have, have kind of accelerated that future by about 18 months. So um, the time is now and uh, everybody's interested in, in interactions. Everyone needs to be able to monetize live streams. And, uh, you know, here we are uh, at the right place at the right time with the right technology. So it's pretty damn cool. <laughs> now, I love it. I, I, you know, I think for, uh, you know, people looking at the industry, they think, oh, live streaming and it, re you know, got a lot of popularity with gaming and, you know, you had a lot of gamers come up through the space. But like for me, when I see uh, the future of live streaming and I see the future of content, it's a, a deeper connection with people, right? And and yeah. at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do is bring value to people and they can interact. And there was a show uh, many years ago that um, that uh, was Fifth Element. I don't know if you guys watched that way back when with Bruce, Bruce Willis, but it was like they, they would go live immediately and it go across all the stuff and you'd have followers and all this other stuff. This is like pre you know, going live stream and they're like, okay. And they're interacting and they're bringing their own persona into it. And I'm like, I can see a world that that's going to happen. And, and, and then two, the other component would be, uh, which I think is the component that I'm the most excited about your company, Dave, which is the e-commerce component. Uh, my, my grandma literally, like when she passed, we went into her house and she had boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff that she bought off of QVC. <laughs> and, you know, that live streaming element of, you know, showing, showing a product or integrating in a product in a unique way or having it so that it, you can actually go and buy. Uh, there's something super powerful about that. Uh, so, Dave, would you just take a moment of where you see the future is going and why you're developing the tools that is literally disrupting uh, the industry? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's always been in my mind that uh, the day that you can bring the audience in as an active participant uh, in, a, in a live production is the day that media will change forever. And uh, I think that day is here. Um, there were a couple of pieces of big missing infrastructure to make that happen. The first was the ability to treat um, interactive elements as kind of production assets in a show. So like you bring in a video clip or an overlay, you can bring in a, a vote or a game show element uh, or a transaction opportunity. Um, the second was a, a low enough 
um, a, a video player that was in near real time so the audience could actually participate in a way that makes sense. So we were trying to do like crazy interactive webcam shows like even back in 2013. And there was always that issue of the latency. If it's more than a few seconds, it be, becomes very difficult to do these kind of new style game shows. Uh, the other side of it, and, and, and what I'm most excited about as well, Daryl, is, is the, the uh, uh, live video transactions. And what's really cool is that those count as interactions. So the audience gets that same amazing feeling that they're an active living participant in the show when they uh, make a purchase of a product and the streamer um, shouts them out on screen and thanks them by name. They feel like they're a part of uh, the, a part of the experience and, and, and an actor in the show. Uh, so well, then way more people start to buy. And yes, I mean, Absolutely, next generation QVC. But there's so many other cool formats, as Daryl, I think you alluded to, where the selling can be included in the content and it doesn't have to be all about the selling. Um, and I can't wait to see what creators uh, come up with, with with these new tools and, and, and with the the ability to uh, turn those those interactive shows into businesses, which is really important for, for this uh, new style of content to be sustainable. Yeah, I've been screaming at the top of my lungs for years when whenever they say, hey, do you have a feature request for YouTube? And when I'm meeting with engineers or, you know, just the VPs uh, that that makes some really good decisions, it's like like you, your parent company is, is Google and and there's Google Wallet. Like it, it should be so integrated in a live stream that they can buy anything like you would blow Amazon completely out of the water if they had that shopping experience. So they don't need to go to a Shopify. They don't need to go to Amazon. It's like really natively there. And, and, and people can do it. It's like, oh, I like those TV or these sneakers. Boom. I can see the sneakers that are in the thing and it can, they can go to check out having that to be more interactive as an element I see is where the future is going. And so, you know, uh, and, and I know Dave, you and I have had I this discussion agree, yeah. a lot. <laughs> it's just like, there's just, if, if people don't leave and they can buy by one click, that's like the smartest thing that could ever happen. Um, and I think that the elements are there uh, from YouTube's perspective. Maybe they have to redesign the back end so it doesn't break everything. That's fine. But I, I see when the day that creators say, OK, the the ad revenue that we're partnering with YouTube is a drop in the bucket. But the true opportunity is to give them the platform to to not only create content, but to generate their own money income outside of memberships, outside of super chat, outside of, you know, ad revenue. That's that's going to be the biggest play because um, and, and I don't people I don't think people really understand this. I think more and more people are starting to get an inkling. But these these creators uh, that have these audiences um, they're very loyal. And if they're, if they don't leave the video, they don't leave the stream, they don't leave the, that, that interaction, they become super loyal because they can do boom, one quick, uh, you know, uh, notification or buy or purchase or whatever, and still be there for that entertainment value. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you lose the magic when you send them away from the show to make a purchase or do an interaction. So it's never been enough to say, Hey, everybody go vote on Twitter. Um, and, or, or, uh, come to my store and make a purchase. Um, it, it should be a seamless experience. And, and, and in terms of a new a way to actually monetize live that makes sense, I'm so excited by live video transactions because that can become a real exchange of value between creator and audience. It doesn't have to be all one way with a, a audience member sending money to creators. When creators can actually send money back to the audience, then everything gets comes to life, right? And uh, um, that opens up the next generation of game shows and the next generation of innovative formats that finally take advantage of a medium that's a that's a two way medium, right? Stop using the internet as, as a distribution medium and stop trying to jack uh, internet live internet broadcasts onto VOD players. Uh, th there's a whole new world of content formats, uh, and, and I, we're right at that paradigm shift. So interesting. Yeah. I remember er earlier on in, in my career. In the when it came to the video creator space, working with influencers and creators, we found patterns where, you know, where it made more sense, even though there was, you know, maybe less people watching at the end of the video to have the creator talk about a product or talk about the brand at the end of the video, especially if the brand wanted to drive transactions because people were then willing to get the information and then jump off and then go check it out instead of 
you know, jumping off in the middle of the video or at the beginning of the video. Um, where this is so exciting, uh, I mean, you know, where, where it can happen then and there, where there's this something can pop up and they can buy something without being disturbed or interrupted or having to push pause or anything like that. Like that's a huge. And then also making, you know, talking about the future of these game shows, that's something that's also, so I, I haven't really thought of like, you know, being able to just like send out money as well. Um, you know, when people yeah. win a competition, that's going to be a game changer, but like, yeah, I can tell you that, that Mr. Beast right now has been asking for that feature for three years. It's just like, I want to give people money and I want them to know it's me and not this little scam thing that's going on. Like, give me that ability to do that. Come on. I mean, yeah. I do agree. And he's proven that, that that works. Like he, he, he makes it a true value exchange when he's doing transactions with the audience. And the, the other thing that gets me excited about uh, monetizing streams with, with transactions versus advertising is it, it's so much, um, uh, so much better experience for the audience. It's non interruptive. Uh, it's a, it's a direct and clear, uh, transaction. So you know, you're sending them the money versus them, um, uh, taking your information and selling that or, or, or running an ad um, uh, based on s information they have on you. So it's it's a really cool um, uh, new way to do it. And uh, yeah, it opens up uh, like a world of, of these these uh, um, new formats. And and it's the cool thing is it's already been kind of proven out in China. So uh, seventeen percent of all live uh, sorry seventeen percent of all e commerce transactions in China went through live video in twenty twenty. That is like an incredible amount. I think it was something like $135 billion moved through live video. And not only do, does that open up, um, you know, clearly a, a major opportunity for the rest of the world, uh, but, you know, I can't wait to see what happens when like the uh, storytellers get a hold of this and start using it besides um, uh, straight QVC style selling, because it's, it's, it truly is a game changer. Yeah, everything that's happening in the East and, and in China is, is very fascinating. And I, I remember going to China close to like, you know, nine, ten years ago. And I, I thought the West was way far ahead. You know, we had a lot more options with video, um, a lot more adoption. And since then, um, it became way more complex. And and for the most part, I, I would say, you know, those 150 relevant Platform video platforms in China made a much more complex and interesting environment that we're now trying to learn from and apply over here in the West, and that, and, and that's why you see you know the Amazons, all the platforms, as well as like the WalMarts, all trying to get into this space to figure out you know how they navigate it, so they're 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 ahead of the next huge wave, which is going to be live streaming. Um, earlier right. in my career, I remember. Um, friends that had startups or trying to launch brands or companies always talking about hopefully QVC accepts them and hopefully they can like, you know, get on this, you know, um, 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 show or on, on QVC and present their product, you know, to their audience. And, and, and a lot of people got rejected. And then there were other friends that made it and it bombed. Or it, it, it flopped and it didn't work for them like it worked for other people out there. And, th and there's even though there's so much value around QVC in the day, there's still so much risk. And what I'm noticing here, both obviously in China, but also here as people are starting to live stream today, there are smaller creators that maybe have a handful of thousands of, of followers, like 5,000 followers or 15,000 followers that can still monetize through a live stream. And, 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 and make significant money. Absolutely. It's kind of like what uh, YouTube did to democratize TV. Uh, Stage 10's Rosie Player can do to democratize the QVC. Like anyone can go on and do it. We, there's no gatekeepers anymore. And, and the, best, uh, um, the best presenters, the people who connect best with their audience and, and understand the uh, techniques of a, a true interactive dialogue between uh, streamer and audience, they'll be the ones... Uh, who, who, who succeed uh, at it. Yeah. I, what, what I find fascinating about this more than anything else is there's, there's people that are testing the limits of what you can and can't do, you know? And, and I think that that creates a need and there's like this opportunity, but um, I, I, I have been a live stream component uh, especially when it's like having a call to action that's interactive 
as yeah. much as you possibly can for a very long time. And it just converts. Um, you know, we, we look at, uh, Ricky and I, uh, produce a, a TV show and, uh, one of the things that we did to raise money for it, and even to this day, is interacting live with our audience. And even when the audience was like five people, those five people were really important to us. And then as it expands out, is because there's just a sense of connection that you can get live. And then right. two, you know, the, the, the thing that I don't like, but I, I love that you're addressing this problem, which is leaving the experience. And then two, uh, the latency issue always kills it too, because like, oh, it's like two minutes, they're two minutes behind or 30 seconds behind or, or yeah. four seconds behind, you know, just having that low latency is key because then it's, it's extremely interactive. And I think right. that, that people, when, when you're looking at um, where things are going, everything has to be transactional based. And I, I, I say that for truth because, you know, you can only do so much and, and hit a, a point, but you could have a smaller amount of audience. And let's just say that you have a thousand people that pay you a thousand dollars a year because of that live interaction. That's a million dollars. And so it's like, this can translate into a very powerful platform, but you got to give the, the ability to the people to, um, create these opportunities because they're, they're going to be the ones that are pushing the envelopes. They're going to be the ones that coming up with creative ways to do things that you've never even thought of either as a platform designer or an engineer, because they're like, Oh, it'd be really cool if we did this. And Dave, you and I have had a ton of the different conversations on that because this is like when you can actually put a, a system or a platform or a way to, uh, for content creators that can make money or people like me can make money, we can get creative on how to utilize it to really engage in ways that would be unique. Right. And and we, like, we, that, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, we cre actually created two ways to create this kind of new interactive content monetized by transactions. First, we built like a, a mobile app that's kind of like the big app in China, Taobao Live, uh, where anybody can go live as easily as making a video call. But just a few weeks ago, uh, we actually added the live video commerce uh, uh, interactions as an asset within our core Stage 10 Pro Studio, uh, which is used to make some of the biggest uh, um, uh, multi-source remote live productions in the world. So when you suddenly have access to an e-commerce opportunity that you can bring in in a full, robust production studio, the storytelling opportunities kind of go through the roof. And uh, uh, as far as I know, there's nowhere else in the world, uh, no other platform in the world that can actually do that. And and I truly believe it's going to be a game changer. We, we did a couple of, when we released that, we did a couple of shows over the last couple of weeks um, with some of our uh, partners. We did one with uh, American Public Media at the end of December. They uh, um, moved 7% of all viewers made a purchase. Uh, they had a fifth 1,500% increase uh, in sales from their previous live events and 80% of the people they invited out to the interactive show uh, showed up. And then just uh, uh, less than a week ago, we did one with the uh, Atlantic Records. Same thing, 7% of all the viewers uh, made purchases and it was crazy. At the peak, 115 purchases were going on per minute. Uh, and throughout the whole show, I think it was an average of about uh, nine or 10 purchases a minute. So, I mean, it just works. And what was even more cool about it than watching the money flow through it was watching how the audiences reacted to it. They loved it. They were, it was, it was, it felt like a real time conversation between audience and talent. And, um, and they loved the feeling of buying and being thanked on screen. Um, they wanted more. Um, and, and it gave them a, re I think it gives people a reason to tune in at a particular time if they get the, the uh, impression that they're going to be a part of the show and that they're an actor in the show. Uh, and that, um, and then it's, it's awesome that when they, you know, send money through the show, it, it counts as that interaction. They get that feeling that they're uh, um, actually a living part of the production. Yeah. I, I could honestly, and I can attest to this because I've been doing this type of uh, these events uh, for years. Um, there's, there's just a sense of an organic uh, connection that is made through the transaction, especially with, with creators that they, they have. It's a new opportunity, yeah. whatever. Um, and what, what I, what I've seen is we've blown away records on live streams, uh, on YouTube of, of, uh, super chats coming in, 
Uh, but more importantly, the transactional stuff that we have to send them off of YouTube, like that's that missed opportunity we're talking about. But mm-hmm. it's that validation factor of when they see their name come up on screen or they're say, hey, thanks so and so for that. Um, it's, right. it's amazing. And, and then two, the amount of, of energy that that actually brings, uh, the creator. Cause like once they understand, oh, here it's coming in, you know, I've seen live streams extended, uh, to a 24 hour period that is going for 24 freaking hours just because it was still being profitable that we had a, a, a limit. As soon as we hit that limit or, or, or basically the, the minimum that we was going to, you know, give it one more hour and then we kill the stream. And we, we went 24 hours, you know, before we did, we, they, they only gave up because it was still hitting that. Right, cause, back cause the creator <laughs> gets the juice. The, yeah. The creator gets the juice from the audience, almost like it's like a, an old school theater show, right? That you, you get like an adrenaline kick from being in front of that many people and hearing their real time reactions. And you get a bit of that uh, with this new style of content too. Yeah. I, I think that the, the future is bright when it comes to that, especially when, when creators can do it from their, their phone. And I, I think that um, the, the companies that can figure this out where, Oh, I can do all these things right from my phone and I can go live anytime that I feel like it. Um, and, and enable these features, I think that will be the company to watch for the quite a few years, uh, because it, it, like there's a sense of, uh, what the YouTube partner program did to content creation. Like Ricky and I and Dave, you were able to see that too. It's like, as soon as you, you brought the money proposition in, they're like, Oh, this is not just a hobby or a fun thing to do. I can actually make them make money at this. I can actually have a business with this. I can actually have employees and do some really cool stuff. That's great. And when brands start to approach them, that's great. But that monetization uh, transaction between, uh, YouTube. And, and creating partners that they trust to, to do that, that just changed the landscape. And I think the next version of that is we're starting to see, okay, that, that model works. And, you know, there's like uh, TikTok doing the creator fund. That's what YouTube did too. And, you know, Instagram and so on and so forth. But it's that point where I know that if I can go like this, turn it on and get it go and interact with an audience that loves and cares what I'm doing. That's, that's the game changer, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and in any, this is, this is a very important point too, but it, that any company that gets greedy in that part of like, okay, we're going to just dominate. We're going to take a huge percentage. That's, a, that's a barrier. We're like, well, I don't, why am I going to do that? I can do it another way. But if it's, if it's a, that micro transaction, that percentage on the transaction right. that is very, very small, then it makes sense. It's just like it does. It's like, it's like, you know, putting something on Amazon. Uh, versus, you know, trying to stock everything in house. It's just like, it makes sense. And you can see what Amazon was built to be. It's just like, let's give that, that those tools to the people that can drive those, uh, cells, you know, and then just take a v- very small, uh, percent. And I think, um, you're going to see, and I, and when I say you, uh, we're talking everyone listening or watching this podcast, you're going to see a transition where, um, the, the model of split is not going to make any sense. It's just not going to make any sense because there's going to be so much competitions of where they can go to it. It's just like, give them the tools. And then those little one-off transactional, um, uh, percentages is, is can be very, very replicated. Cause if you can get, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars coming in every second or every minute, exactly. which I truly do believe can happen. You yeah. know, if you really go out there and you're taking a percentage of that, I mean, What's your, what's your cost really? I mean, engineers, of course, and, and then bandwidth, right? right. <laughs> I mean, like seriously. Yeah. No, Dara, I totally agree. I mean, it, that's all, uh, exactly what we're uh, uh, building at stage 10 uh, and, you know, throughout the process and working with creators for years and years, as we, you know, powered their broadcast to social, you know, we learned some of those things too. And Hey, what can we do to make this, you know, their game? Like they, the revenue is theirs. Uh, a transaction fee makes sense to make it sustainable. But if you've got enough transactions running through the platform and you're absolutely right, it's going to be a multi-billion dollar business because uh, once people start to see this content and experience it, they're just going to want more. And uh, th- there's a massive opportunity in the marketplace uh, to launch a live real-time interactive network uh, where the, the money is flowing back and forth between uh, creator and audience and and, and uh, to make that successful it doesn't require a large transaction fee um, from the platform uh, if there's enough action going on um, 
so that's that's exactly what we're uh, we're working towards. And, and trust me, that's like that's a thing that I have with YouTube, uh, and I'll make it public because I've been public on a lot of this stuff. But it's like I understand the transaction uh, percentage of ad revenue. They have to go out and find the advertiser. They have to go and go do that stuff. They're bringing that there to them, but there's no way in a million years that it makes any sense whatsoever to, to take 30% of a super chat. Like, I, I, I don't even know, like seriously, like, and I know creators that won't even turn it on. They're like, like, I, I know I can make money, but it's, I'm only getting, you know, 70% and that 30% that adds up. And some of these creators are getting hundreds of thousands of dollars that way. And I'm like, well, why wouldn't you do that? Well, they can monetize it in another way. I mean, you only have so many dollars to spend. Right. And it's just like, they can right. send it to another way and, and take, you know, 85, 95%. And I think that's the whole thing. And, and and I get like there's there's engineers and there's costs and there's overhead. But realistically, it's like when you make it so lucrative that people can come on and do it and you're you're going on that aspect, absolutely it, um it, it's valuable, right? But when you when 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 you play the percentage game, it's like, oh well, I can get you know 90% here, they're only 10. That audience that's the most valuable thing that anyone can ever really develop is going to go with the creator. That they that's will. Right. And that, that's proven. And this is where I think, I mean, I think what you're saying, Daryl, is, is is spot on. And 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 you too, Dave, where if if you're not obsessing over what the percentage is and is, you know, taking a very minimal amount and then letting the creator get as much of a return as possible on their streams, that's gonna be what really grows this. Um and it'll also be interesting to see if there is a you know a correlation to television where a lot of the top CPNs and the expensive you know ads are with live stream. I mean, or are with live events and and sporting events, etc. I, I would say that that's probably a huge chunk of what's keeping a lot of um, mainstream television, especially you know event uh, sports events and live events. That's what's you know keep, keeping them afloat. Um, when, yeah, when it- a gathered audience is the most valuable audience, and in the in the age of on demand content, um, it it really is interactivity that's going to gather an audience because uh, uh, they have to be there to be able to participate in in the content. Well, so it's interesting, and te- I mean, Daryl, you you don't know this actually. There was that one. Point- I'm glad that you tell me stuff that I don't know, Ricky. Go right ahead. <laughs> yeah. So there's that one point at, at Plaid. Um, just you know, a couple years into it, where we almost made a huge pivot on creating, um, you know, a live platform from a mobile device, and and, and the I reason why is because everyone was talking about it, how they wanted another option or another opportunity with video to really monetize, um, whether it's you know rev share for through advertising or you know it, 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 through other means, and. Um, what was interesting is, you know, I, I ended up not, you know, agreeing with, I mean, I didn't find any VCs that I felt good about partnering with. I didn't like any of those agreements. And so I stuck with the business plan, which I think hindsight was smart because it was before Periscope. It was before all these, you know, new um, live platforms. And, and the truth was, and the truth is, is that, you know, um, people weren't ready for it. Um, now that people are ready, creators are hungry for this. Yes. Um, who is going to win or is there just going to be a, a, a diverse group of options that work best for you and your personality or your brand? Because we talk about the streaming wars between Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime. But I think the streaming live wars is going to be much more complicated, way more diverse. And there's going to be a lot more people you know, fighting for those audiences. Um, what do you both think? Um, I mean, who do you think are going to be the winners? I mean, are there going to be winners or is it just going to become more and more competitive? And those that continue to innovate are going to be the ones that, you know, end up, ha- you know, being able to self-sustain. I mean, I definitely think it's going to be those who figure out as quickly as possible how important it is that their shows need to be a dialogue and not a monologue. And and uh, it'll quickly come, be, become clear. And then once that happens, uh, there'll be a number of formats and styles that, that are going to be sustainable. And and I think it's, it's interesting as well that when you add e-commerce to live streaming, uh, that is probably going to drive a whole bunch of retailers to become creators and creators to become retailers. And I think it'll just make more people... 
telling cool stories in different ways. Like, um, and there's and it, and it it works across so many different formats and subject matters, um, uh, from from informational to to game shows to you know new style dating shows to uh, to shows that are you know the price is right where you can actually buy the items on screen. The next talk show where instead of the guest coming in and pitching their next movie or their next uh, product, they're actually selling tickets to that movie and they're actually selling the uh, products right online. It's just, um, uh, I, it really is, I think it's big, bigger than any of us even imagine how, how that this is going to change media. And it's one of those things that happens maybe once every half century and, and uh, somehow we find ourselves right at that doorstep right now. I, I would 100% agree uh, with what you're saying, Dave. And I think that the, there's the, that's kind of the, the biggest picture uh, play. Uh, I think Ricky, f- for me to answer that question, I think it's anyone that's willing to throw in resources to make, uh, make the creators that, that are making the disruption, um, the money. Okay. And so facilitating them. And, and I do know this, uh, YouTube is tripling, quadrupling, quintupling down on shifting money content to get people to go live stream. I mean, they're, they're throwing, uh, creators great money to have these guaranteed streams that go up. And so that's usually stage one. And that wasn't a pun for stage 10, but that's no, usually the first, first. Yeah. They, they only do. got nine more stages till they get to the, uh, exactly. <laughs> I, I know but, a variety of creators are, are, they're going through that right now as well. And it's not public. But yeah, I mean, the platform. No, that's, that's what's happening right now. And so I, I think YouTube is, is on the verge of, of doing it. But the problem is always what Dave just said. It's, it's, yeah, you're encouraging them there, but it's more of that community connection uh, through it and validation. Like there's so many people, like this is truth that will leave a comment and throw $300 down just so that their name pops up in a freaking feed and sits there for a while. Now that's brilliant, but what that does from a human's perspective, it it, it self validates, Hey, I support you, or I want you to see this comment, or I want that little shout out. And then I can guarantee you when the people say, Oh man, we just got a super chat for 300 bucks. Oh, John, thank you so much for putting that in. Yeah, I agree with you. What happens? It just, just like feeds it. Right. But it's like super delayed. Um, and it's like, okay, that's, it, it kind of breaks it out. And sometimes, you know, you don't want to do those up and they kind of disappear. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do to, to bring that social validation. Yeah, and we, and we built those showdowns right into, uh, uh, stage 10's transactional capabilities. So when someone makes a purchase, we do two things. We bring a shout out overlay up on screen. If the creator chooses to show them just in an automated way, we also inform the, the streamer to thank the buyer by name. And, and we've seen that over and over again, that it just drives incredible sales and and we, we obviously all saw that with the um streamers on twitch over the last few years as they were taking tips and donations and shouting people out uh because it is that that transaction becomes an interaction it becomes a form of connection between creator and audience and, and it it kind of helps to break through that fourth wall but i don't i like I, that's just the beginning stage right so the the real stage is when the creator um that knows how to connect and knows how to to engage a live um uh, you know do a live episode um or a live video or a live live stream uh, but knows how to interact with the audience so have them take a part of that um then it's game over where it, they, if money is a tied to it outside of the the transactional thing through you know any donation or super chat or you know uh membership type portion of it and you take it to a new level then i see like i see some big creativity i mean right now i mean this is just the ideas that go through my head and it's not anything i thought about it just really hit my my mind just talking about this but see someone live stream and and not stop OK, and and they can't go to the next place until the community is involved to do it. And they're trying to get across the United States or around the world, you know, and it's going into certain places. And, you know, OK, I, I haven't eaten yet. You know, let's see if we can figure out how to get that transactional thing to occur. You know, what should I what should I get? And then people are like literally being feeling a part of the journey of them doing it, which makes really interesting content. Um, and then it has that community interaction of what to do, where to go. Um, I, I think those can be really, really powerful, uh, but that's just like one random idea. And I think as you create these these opportunities for creators to to use their creativity 
um, to create content that will generate money, that's when we'll see it take it to the stage 10 level, which is is like literally giving it where it is an interactive experience that can go by without leaving the the video itself can can interact along the journey uh, with that creator. And, you know, just the the transaction that occurs is just kind of a, a stage within the process of of that that production. Absolutely. And, and you add the, the ability to do that in near real time and it just comes to life. And, and I totally agree. Uh, it's, it's like a new palette for storytellers. And that's what's always got me so excited about it is like, what could you do if we had this? And then it's like, wow, like, uh, you know, we don't need to, you know, think in, in terms of the kinds of shows they were, uh, you know, making decades ago. Uh, here's a whole new uh, way to create the f content formats of the future. And, and this, uh, I, I always love those those um, creative blue sky opportunities where it's it's like given these new tools and opportunities and and uh, um, uh, infrastructure you know what can we do to, to create the next great content formats and, and that has a lot of value too the formats themselves uh, so I, I'm, I'm really excited by to see what you're saying Daryl and, and what happens when the best storytellers in the world um, get their hands on this and, and start coming up with the coolest new ideas so, so th this sounds kind of funny and maybe it's kind of way out there but when do virtual events are actually virtual events where you have this gaming virtual reality all combining together where you're doing a live event you're there as an individual and everyone around you look like real individuals does that make sense that's really crazy you know <laughs> like where, where you can like go to a gathering i'm there as ricky ray butler i look exactly the same way but I'm not actually there, but it is live. We are interacting. You, you know, you know, you would change your avatar, dude. You know, you would change your avatar. Like, I'm come on. I'm happy with my looks, Daryl. I, I do not like this type of shaming. So let's move on. Um, <laughs> but no, I, no, I mean, really that, though, that is okay, coming. Maybe it would. I mean, that's probably, you know. 20 years minimum away, but that is coming. Uh, and that, I think there'll be something cool about that and something sad about that. Um, but uh, I mean, we're all experiencing what it's like to not have real human interaction, and there's it's, there's definitely a bit of a, a hole there. Um, but yeah, no, I I think that's that's going to be a thing. Um, it probably a little further in the future. It could be sad, or it might just streamline and scale yourself in a way that hasn't ever happened before. Where yes, of course, you're going to still want to have those real interactions, but you get to the point where you know. If you need to be in Japan and New York at the same time, you can't. Ooh, that's cool. Like project. Oh, I love that. You clone yourself with that. All you do is you go in this like um, bubble pod and you're able to multitask a, a, across different um, holographic or virtual reality projections in, in multiple places. That would be handy for sure. If, if we have more <laughs> pen, I was like, whoa, we're really going deep here. But like if we yeah, have hey, like I, another, I love sci-fi because it becomes reality. It, it really does. If we have like another 2020 or a couple more 2020s in the future, this is the type, the type of thing that is going to be created and it's going to accelerate it. And yep. I, I think live is being accelerated much quicker as a, as a result of, you know, you know, a very devastating year. But the silver lining is that there's a lot of innovation that comes to the table that ends up making, you know, everyone's lives better in different ways. And, 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 and you know, so streamlined communication and, and doing it in a way, you know, that is more practical, um, you know, makes sense. But I, I agree because like, the human element is extremely important. But as people are connecting authentically to creators or those that are live streaming, there might be even a way to level that up. Totally. I, I don't know. I'm really excited um, where, where things are going. And I, I look, look, once again, I just think it's just mobile all the way. I think it's just easier, the interactivity. You know, Gen Z, they could have a, a thousand inch TV in front of them and they'll be on their little 5.8 inch <laughs> screen or something right. like that. It's just that's just the way that it is. But I, I think it's going to come in innovations. And I, I do know that and and this is once again it's just the money component if you if you if they can make a sustainable business and scale 
um, uh, affordably and figuring out ways to use your creativity, then you're going to actually push the envelope. And I think that's what YouTube did early on. I think, um, you know, one, one of the founders of YouTube said that the YouTube monetization program came through with that he was drunk and hung over and just blurted it out, you know, on stage. Um, and then he's like, well, now we got to do it and told the engineers, let's figure this thing out. And, but the, I think the, the big thing is, is I think that is, that was the, the piece that was needed. Uh, to get quality content and, and you look at the industry that it created. Um, it's just that next level of innovation that's coming in with live streaming that would, uh, take us, uh, further on, but it's going to have to be real time. It's going to have to be mobile. It's going to have to do it. And I think the thing for me, and I, I do want to, uh, move into this segment portion of it. And if you guys don't want to, you can say, Hey, no, well, let's don't talk about it. But I think that that um, having a global satellite internet system that is in play right now, that it is opening up new areas of the world, is that next iteration of of the internet that we can do a lot of these things in any any place uh, of the world. And I, I just want to know, Dave, your thoughts on that. I don't know if you've been following Elon Musk's project. Uh, that he's, yeah, that he's his little uh, cube satellites and uh, his internet uh, via satellite. I think that's that's a great. I mean, he he's a quite a character that guy. He does some cool stuff. Um, but yeah, I I think as uh, high speed internet becomes um, uh, more universally accessible, uh, it becomes a, a game changer for how uh, content is made and produced, um, and it. What's exciting to me is it can be really helpful to uh, certain countries that haven't had the advantage or, or regions that haven't had the infrastructure advantages uh, that we've had here in North America or that they have in right. Europe and Asia. Um, and then we're going to see all kinds of new cool creators and new styles of content come to the fore. And, and if you can give them a way to make money doing it, um, wow, you know, you can create a, a major boosts to economies that, um, uh, that could really use them. And, and take a look at this. So what goes through my mind on a global uh, internet system that you're able to c connect and live stream, like who's going to live stream uh, going to Mount Everest? And if there's a live stream component where they can make money, you know, because if, if they're able to broadcast out to the world because of, of the way that it is and they're not tethered and it's, it's there – that's a very unique uh, social moment that's going to have a lot of merit, you know, and, and there's a lot of cool little technologies is like, okay, getting to that next, that, that next journey, the next part, you know, and, and I, I think that type of content creation is going to be off the freaking charts that you can go in the, in the bottom of the Grand Canyon and you could be on a raft and you can be live streaming the whole thing. I mean, that's the, that's the capability that's going to unleash uh, on the world, I think it's going to really disrupt. And I think the people that make live streaming available on the phone, but more importantly, the stuff that we've been talking about, I think that's where it's going to take it. Completely. Yeah. And I mean, imagine the, uh, like, I like to call one of those formats that'll come uh, um, under these conditions that we're talking about, a uh, curated reality. So it doesn't have to be the guy at the top of Everest producing the show, but what if anybody uh, producing a show could access the feeds from the guys at the top of Everest, mix that with the guy at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and, uh, you know, have an adventure show uh, based on all the cameras and everybody's pockets all around the world. Um what, what kind of cool formats will, will come out of that? Uh, it's it's uh, really exciting. Yeah, that, that will be interesting because there's definitely an element of surprise that I think goes into this when it comes to live streaming. You know, you're in the moment with that individual. And you yes. know, whether an animal pops up or, or whatever, where they are, you know, something, you know, dramatic happens, you're there and you're a part of it. And so right. For years, people have talked about citizen journalism, and I never totally bought that. But what I do buy is, is a network of citizen witnesses with a journalist somewhere else asking them to describe what they're seeing. That makes a lot of sense. Like, how does, how does covering events and, and uh, um, world happenings change uh, when that good internet's everywhere and anyone can send in a feed uh, from anywhere and, and journalists can easily sort and access them? I, that gets me excited too. Well, Dave, um, thank you for joining us. And we have this one question that we do at the tail end of the podcast. Sure. Is is there any technology, of course, live streaming, of course, <laughs> but out there that's really getting you excited uh, about where the future is going? Um, and if there might be a platform or a creator 
Um, would you just kind of share where you think that's going um, and what gets you the most excited outside of what we just talked about? Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, I, seeing as I'm here with my stage 10 CEO hat on, I, I, I'm most excited to see what, what happens when we uh, unleash these, these tools to, to um, give people the ability to uh, control interactive elements as assets, to be able to bring in transactions and, and to be able to let audiences experience that in real time. Um, you know, that, that gets me super excited. All the, all the stuff that you guys are talking about too, like with, you know, uh, um, fast internet for everybody, um, you know, quadruple virtual projections. But for me, I've been a mission-based entrepreneur and I've always been about what happens when uh, creators are given the infrastructure to create interactive content and, and, and audiences are given the infrastructure to experience it and the whole thing can be monetized. Because I actually think it is um, uh, one of those moments in media like – um, that uh, you know will change everything and 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 actually be very good um, for people and and the planet. Yeah, that's that's interesting. And and and, and you know, Daryl, we don't typically just add on <laughs> to these statements here here at the end. Um, but one thing that you know is coming to mind is you know with more content, there's more data, and we know content like visuals, text, audio, that's all unstructured data, and there's going to be more and more of it. And there's going to be more and more um, need of storing it and demand of storing it as, as, as well as of transferring data. And so, you know, one question I have that I've been thinking about a lot and I have friends that are in this you know, side of the industry is how do we get to the point of like transferring, you know, you know, big data in the future in a way that's way more streamlined and scalable than it is today? Because, I don't know if you, you guys know this, but there's controversy of like sending data overseas to like, you know, those cables where, you know, there's a lot of um, um, covert, you know, type of operations with submarines trying to disrupt the, the transferring of data or intercepting data. And, and you can look on the news, you can look up where like where there's submarine fires from different governments across the globe that are trying to disrupt, you know, the transferring of data. And, and if you look how Amazon does it, they still do it with cars. They come to your offices, get all of your data, you know, put, put you know, put on a bunch of hard drives, and then they, within a very secure way, transfer it to a data center. Um, yeah, that's I an mean, area that about- I think is going to be really interesting. I have I have a buddy that has a company where he literally has created you know technology and software to help do data transfer through through lasers um, via satellites. And, and, and so, so this, we're talking about science fiction. This is stuff that's happening today. But yeah. what's going to happen with all this data and how do we secure it and transfer it um, when there's all this type of unstructured data that's going to be happening at a much higher rate than we're even experiencing now? Well, I mean, I think it actually comes back to the ability to monetize uh, these live internet streams. So if we give the ability to monetize live streaming um, to the to the world of media and creators. Uh, think about who controls the internet rolling into people's homes. It's the cable companies. And do they l- allow you to have the kind of speed that you need to experience that content? No, because they do not want you to cut off your cable. And if you give them a way to actually um, get a new revenue stream from, from their many sources of awesome content, then maybe they open it up a little bit and uh, we have the technology to give everybody um, fast, uninterrupted uh, streaming. Um, they, 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 they squeeze the pipe and they do it because they've been circling the wagons around um, protecting cable subscriptions for, for uh, too long now. And, and my, my strong hope is, uh, you know, that's about to change as soon as you can show them a path to turning this kind of new content into a real business. Love it. I love where the direction's going. Thank you, Dave, so much uh, for your time. Thank um, you for having and me. Definitely, guys, if you're interested in seeing, you know, the future of live streaming, definitely check out Stage 10. Um, that's something really cool. Um, also, Ricky, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, it's been a great podcast up to this point. And uh, we, we're, are, are you saying we're, goodbye? Yeah, we're just like, it, we're consistent now. We consistently got through stuff. We're, we're doing good, Ricky. We're doing good. <laughs> but uh, we want to thank everyone for listening or watching. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, whatever you need to do, whatever platform it's on. And we'll get, we'll see you on the next podcast.
Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, everyone.